please do. Bring everyone. We know you more than well. Mr. Cratchit, Mr. Bob, will you come tomorrow? I'm afraid I can't tomorrow. Work. Work, my love. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. You promised this year you'd stand up to him. Come on, Cratchit. Bring the whole tribe. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid, afraid my husband worked for a man with an ice pick for a hug. Ah, of course, you toil frog. Scratch, don't you? <laughs> my condolences. Oh, well. So be it. Merry Christmas, Cratchit tribe. So be it. Year after year. Three. Four. There. Beyond reasonable. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you too, Mr. Scrooge. I've left an important document to be copied three times before day's end. One for London, one for Birmingham, one for Manchester. Three, not four, sir. Well, today appears to be day for four. Three? Ah, you mean the extra lump of coal I gave you. Well, curse the fourth. Curse gestures. Just make three copies of the letter and should there be no blots... No smudges, no stains. You may go home. At four. Mr. Scrooge, I, I thought we'd agree that today, on account of the day it is, I could go home at three. I give you an extra lump of coal. And straight away you want to snip an extra hour off the day. Frozen, sir. What is? My ink. I have to throw it on the fire. No, that will waste time. You can use mine. Ah, oh, lovely. Sort of Christmas present, is it? So, oh, please. If it were a Christmas present, I would have wrapped it in ribbons and bows to artificially increase your anticipation. You would tear it open and gasp and say, Oh, my lord. Bottle of ink. This is exactly what I've always wanted. And I would shrug and smile and tell you that of all the ink bottles in all the world, this is the one ink bottle I wanted you to have on this most holy and sacred of days. Behold, one day of the year. They all grin and greet each other when every other day they walk by with their faces in their collars. To pretend on one day of the year that the human beast is not the human beast. But if it were so, if it were possible for so many mortals to look at the calendar and transform from wolf to lamb, then why not every day Instead of one day good, the rest bad, why not have everyone grinning at each other all year and have one day in the year when we're all beasts and we pass each other by? Why not turn it around? Yes, sir. Yes, you could call that day a beastliness, Scrooge Day, in honour of its inventor. Yes, why not? It would be the one day where everyone is free to tell all those around them exactly what they really think of them. <laughs> well, I think every clerk in England would report for work on that day, sir. In order that they could tell their employer the awful truth of what is in their hearts. Yes. Ah. The truth without ribbons and bows. What do you say? I say, sir, in all my ten years of working here, you've never 
bothered to explain your philosophy before. I'm quite flattered, sir, that today of all days you should share the machinery of your great logic with a mere clerk. It isn't logic, Cratchit. Oh, then, sir, what is it? Find out for the word litigation. You have a habit of spelling it wrongly. I spelt it wrongly once. Five years ago. Done. Mrs. Cruz. Already proved the first two, sir. It's checking again, Cratchit. Light grows dim. I sense you are angry with me. Why do you say that? Because everything on this page is perfect, precise, immaculate, you might say. You got it all right to spite me, to to show me. No, sir, no, to uh, to afford you the possibility that since all the work is done correctly and early, I might leave early. Mr. Scrooge is now eight minutes past three. My work is complete. If we're back to logic, then logic suggests that my sitting in there idle for no reason, that's the anomaly. A letter of complaint to the Lord Mayor regarding persistent noise caused by costermongers, gypsy, street musicians, rag and bone men, various other gutter runners. I want this letter written out in duplicate and put in with the last post today. It contains very precise mathematics pertaining to the quantity and frequency of the intrusions. Please be sure to get the numbers correct. I took great pains over them. Huh. Great pain. Yes, I can see that. It is not I in curious mood today, Cratchit. It is you, as if you're suddenly careless of your situation. No, sir. No, I'm not careless of my situation, so I know my situation. I have two children and a wife to take care of at a time of high unemployment. One of my children is very sick, sir, and his treatment costs money. I know, so I know the narrowness of my situation. And so do you. So do you. Two copies of that letter should take you nicely up to four o'clock. We'll see. Done, sir. Finished. Forty minutes left. I assume you have something else for me to fill the time. Go home. 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 Darling. When did you get home? Okay, let me go about 40 minutes early. Very strange mood. It's Christmas. Let's not talk about him. Also, while you were while you were gone, Tim wrote his Christmas letter to your cousin Jack. That's what he wrote. Dear Mr. Levitt. I hope you're well and that there's lots of snow there in America. Darling, after seven years. There's no need for Tim to keep on writing letters of thanks to America every single Christmas for eternity. Why? He did save Tim's life. Very well. I'll go and post it. I'll catch the last post. We'll, um... We'll all... come with you. You know, I'm not sure if you spelt your cousin's name correctly. Mary, is it... Is it Levitt with two T's or one? It... It's spelt with two T's. I swear last year you said it was spelt with one T. My cousin is now an American. They don't care for teas, they drink coffee. <laughs> this cousin whose name changes every year. We never mentioned before Tim became sick. The children are happy here. Stay with them. I'll post the letter and I'll come back.
soon be Christmas. Mary. Is there something you want to tell me? <laughs> the money you received was not sent by some mysterious cousin in America. Who did send it? Why? Like Christmas be, Bob, please. Just like Christmas be. Listen. It's almost here. When Christmas is done, you tell me who. Mrs. Cratchit. May I come in? May I speak with you in confidence, Mr. Scrooge? Yes, I always have time for early risers. Your husband ill? Are you here to make excuses? No, my husband will be reporting for work in one hour as usual. Though to work on Christmas Eve is not so usual. What do you want at this hour? As I think you know, two years ago I gave birth to a boy, Tim. And as I also think you know, he was born with imperfections. A surgeon has told us that he requires an operation or he will die. The, the cost of the operation is far beyond our means. How much? £30. You can't sell your house? You have no rich relative? My husband is too proud to ask you himself. But I weigh my pride against my baby's life. Mary... As a lonely widow, I had a dozen invitations to dinner, and I'm mightily glad that I chose to accept yours. Never a finer goose for seen. I'm so cheap. He had a broken leg or a leg shorter than the other or something. <laughs> Bob, you carve. After dinner, I'm going skating. I want to come in this year. Eat your dinner first, but in... Come on, Dad. I'm starving. Yeah, me too. Mm, look at that. Did you help, Melinda? Tim? I plucked the goose. Please go and call. So we discussed the source how? of the money after. How? I need to tell you, Bob. I want to tell you where I got the money for Tim's operation. If you want to tell me the truth here and now, please go ahead and do it. And before the goose goes cold. There is no rich cousin in America. I made him up. That Christmas day, I, I went to Margaret Henderson, the one who lost her mind. I asked if I could have a pair of her earrings. She said, yes, take them. I took the diamonds from her jewelry box and I sold them. That is how I got the money. <laughs> Sweetheart, this moment of truth is the best Christmas present I've ever had. I have something to tell you. All of you. Everyone, your father has something to tell you. Bob, let's eat first. 
know, this news will help with our digestions. What news? Can we eat while we listen? Hush, Belinda. I, uh, I wish to announce I've made a decision about my career. I've decided that uh, Monday morning, December 26th, that's tomorrow, I'm going to go into the office and I'm going to hand in my resignation notice to that old skinflint Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> yes! And Mary, don't be alarmed. I've received an alternative offer, you see, by Mr Thwaites. Free of him. We will never be free of him. What you mean? Enough. We will get Christmas done, Bob. And we must speak again. Mary. We will get Christmas done. Belinda, please. I want to take Sunday. Expecting company, Martha? I would presume. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I know. Unwanted presumption. But on this day... What are you doing here? But this day, this I must do. I have three things I need to say. Get out of my house. One, two, three, and, and then I will go. Item number one. I said... Item the, number one is I know you are planning to hand in your resignation tomorrow. How do you know I'm planning to hand in my resignation? I, 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 I just know. And you are retiring at a very appropriate time because tomorrow morning I am closing the company down. You need to leave my house. Scrooge and Marley will trade no more in this world and as a gesture of goodwill my final item of company business is you to, need to leave my house is to draw up a check for 500 pounds made payable to you by way of thanks for your service so new ice skates for you belinda and more books for you tim mum how do you know about my ice skates I know these things because I've been showing them by spirits. This is item number two, by the way. I have been visited by spirits who were summoned by someone to grab me by the throat and drag me to a bright mirror so that I might see the truth. Mr. Scrooge, have you been drinking? Not yet, but later I will. I, I will drink a toast, indeed, to fathers and mothers and, and children and, 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 and whoever you are at home together for Christmas. Thank you. The check will be delivered by hand. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'll show you out. Merry. It's fine. I do not know what's happened to you. And I don't care. Your 500 pounds will be welcome. I will not buy forgiveness. Nor shall forgiveness ever be earned, nor expected or wanted. My business now is the future. I will just be the best I can be. <laughs>